This video is on section 4.3, logarithmic functions. Uh, we'll go over quite a few topics here. Most, most are pretty short. Um, and there, you'll see with logs, there's a lot of things you can do with a calculator to help yourself out as we go through really the rest of this chapter. Uh, the definition of a logarithmic function is the first thing we'll talk about. And what kind of leads itself into that is the second bullet, po bullet point, which is interchanging between exponential and logarithmic form. Um, and then we'll have a few thing, topics just for this introduction section on logarithms. Um, we want to know how to evaluate logarithms using the change of base formula. And then we'll introduce some basic, quote unquote, basic log rules and how to evaluate logarithms without a calculator. And the last thing, um, what is very common when you deal with logs and applications with logarithms and exponents is that number e, which is about 2.71, and um, the natural log, which if you haven't seen before is depicted by ln, and we'll get to that. Uh, but the last part of the section is just how to simplify things with both e and the natural log index. So the first thing is the definition of a logarithmic function. I will say there is a lot of little things to talk about here, uh, but you really should highlight everything. Uh, really the main reason we deal with logarithms, if you've seen them before, I, you know, I find that most people don't really like them because it just seems like there's this list of rules and there's no real reason we talk about them uh, but the logarithm is the logarithmic function is not I mean I use the word made up as in created not fake um, it is a made up function defined to be the inverse of an exponential function um, so specifically um, as an example of an inverse you've dealt with these plenty That's not what I meant to write. The de uh, uh, something you've dealt with the inverse before. Inverses are used to solve equations, get rid of things that stop us from having x by itself, basically. Uh, so let's say if you wanted to solve x squared equals 4, this is a sidetrack, but the inverse of the x squared function is the square root function. Right? What we do is to get x by itself is we do the square root of each side. Now with the square root, you do have that plus or minus thing going in, which is special to the square root and radicals. Uh, but the inverse of the squared function is the square root because it cancels out the part that's not x. And so that's what an inverse does. and leaves us with just x. Which is exactly what we want. If we want to solve for x in this problem, we would want to go from x squared to x. We do the square root, but the reason we're doing the square root is because it's the inverse of the squared function. All right, so when we have exponential functions, which is having x in the exponent to get rid of the base of the exponent, we do logarithms. That's what they're made for. All right, so the definition, uh, formally a basic logarithmic function. I use the word basic here because we can do some stuff to like uh, we can add numbers and subtract numbers and move things around. But a basic logarithmic function f is written as f of x equal log base b of x. b is called the base of the logarithm. Right, this is a subscript. X is what goes inside the log. That's why I, I always put parentheses about what's inside the logarithm. A lot of people have a bad habit of not doing that and then get confused in their own writing. And B, the base is a subscript. X is uh, what's inside. B is called the base of the logarithm and has the same condition as exponential functions. B is greater than zero and not equal to one. Right. 
And you will notice that this is the same rule for the base of the exponential function. d had to be greater than 0 and not equal to 1. Right. So there are, I have some notes here to talk about. Um, we'll hit on this one as we go through the second section as well. But um, f of x equals log base b of x is the inverse of the function g of x equals b to the x. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Um, there are some properties from inverses that you learned, you should have learned in college algebra. You may not remember exactly what they are, uh, but when you do the inverse of a function, your domain and range gets switched. So the domain of the logarithmic function is the range of the exponential function. And I'll remind you here that is zero to infinity with a parentheses. But this is very meaningful when you deal with logarithms, you can't plug in any number you want inside a logarithm you can only plug in positive numbers you cannot plug in a negative number you cannot plug in zero we'll see when we do stuff on the calculator your calculator will give you an error because it's not something you plug in the range of the logarithmic function is all real numbers negative infinity to infinity same as the domain of the exponential function uh, basically what that's saying is a logarithm can equal any number it wants to equal. All right. Another point to hit on, um, there are two special bases of logarithms. Uh, when b is 10, the base is 10, log base 10 of x, and when the base is e, which is that number about 2.71. Uh, for those of you that don't really remember a lot about e, e is right here below the pi button on this calculator. And if you want to see about what it is, it type it in the calculator you see right there 2.718 it repeats doesn't repeat I mean the decimal goes on forever it's like pi but when you use it just like pi you kind of leave it around in the problem until the end unless if you need a decimal then you type it in so base log base 10 of x the thing you really need to know about this um, typically this is the normal one you use in a lot of science classes like chemistry. Uh, we don't often write the base 10 in. You'll, it, you'll just read as log of x. So specifically, if no base is written, it's understood to be 10. One thing I will warn you, if you're going to use some type of online calculator, make sure that it's actually going to use base 10. Some of them, some online calculators use base e if you type log of x or ln of x. Right, but log base e of x in this class is understood to be ln of x. This is the natural logarithm. That's why it's called ln. It seems like it should be nl for natural logarithm, but they just like to put that l in front. Um, the one thing I particularly I'm not fond of seeing sometimes is people write i n of x. It's not an i, it's an l. Please don't do that. That would be a different function. Uh, but there is one thing that's very different, unlike the exponential function, where b may stand alone. Right? So we kind of did examples with that. Um, if g of x equals 2 to the x, of course, 2 is a number. We don't need the x there for it to make sense. Um, you have to have a number inside the log with its base. If you, if you write just log base b, it makes no sense without something x inside. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just show you on the calculator why that worked out. Uh, you'll see on most calculators you'll have a log button and an ln button. Log with a base 10, ln with a base e. Uh, but if you just hit log and you don't put a number inside, you will get an error. It doesn't understand why you didn't plug in something. If you plug in a positive number, we don't need to know what this means right now. We'll get to that, but that'll give you something. Now, like I mentioned before, its domain is not anything. You cannot plug in zero into a log. So if you type log of zero, you will get an error. If you type log of a negative number, you will also get an error. I guess I didn't close my parentheses there, but I'll just go ahead and redo that. 
both our errors. So that point being, you have to have a number inside the log. There is some base to it. It just that like we just went over, if the base is not written, it's either 10 or E, depending on if it's written as log or ln. Every calculator has log and ln buttons. Not every calculator is necessarily going to have a log with any base button. Now the definition of logarithms being the inverse of a function uh, leads itself to this form, interchanging between exponential and logarithmic form. Um, so I want to talk about this and then we'll do some examples. But what this is saying, this is really one of the main things, the main identity, the main formula for logs, whatever you want to call it that you need to remember. There are plenty but this is the most important one. And what this is saying here is that this equation, y equals log base b of the x, is the same equivalent equation as b to the y equals x. Right, that's what that double arrow means. It's equivalent. You can switch from one of the equations to the other. Now this is very useful because if you have an equation where you're trying to solve for x and you want to get rid of this log, it's telling you exactly what to do. You have to, to get the x by itself, you move the log away and the b goes to the other side in this way. I really like to draw a sort of a picture as far as what's happening to go from one side to the other and it always starts with grabbing the base and moving it to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and show you both ways. Kind of how I think about it, there's a lot of pictures people like to draw. I do the one like this because it's going to be the simplest picture for me. Two other. So what I'm thinking about here is if I'm starting with the left side and I'm trying to get to the right side, both of them revolve around doing the same thing. If I'm starting on the left side here, y equals log base b of x, and I want to see how to get to the right side, I grab the base, b, and I move it to the other side. And one thing you'll notice is when I move to the other side, the log goes away. Okay. So if you start with a log equation and you move, you switch forms to exponential form, the reason it's called that is now it's an exponential. The base becomes the base on the other side, and now it's the base of the exponent. And the exponent is the y, the thing that's in there. Okay. So this turns into b the base to the y power equals x. And the same, you just reverse that pattern if you want to go back the other way. There are some times where we have an exponential equation. Maybe what you need to solve for is in the exponent right here. Well, to get y by itself, you switch to log form. So we grab the base to switch back to log form, it becomes the base on the other side, and it becomes the base of the logarithm. But it's always about moving the base to the other side. If you have a log, it becomes an exponent. If you have an exponent, it becomes a log. And the base is always the base. Right, so if I move that to the other side, my equation, the b got moved, the y is by itself, and I get a log. Its base is b, and the inside is what was over here, x. Okay, so that's the pattern. And just depending on which one we're doing, we're going to practice both ways. 
but just depending on which one you're doing, you're going to go from one to the other. All right, this is very helpful. Uh, the one thing I tend to find when people struggle with this most often is they kind of try to use this formula, write down what Y is, what B is, what X is, and then plug it into the other side. And that's not a good idea. I do not recommend doing that. And pr pretty much all of the log rules that we're going to deal with, if you can think about what it's doing in words, it's a lot more helpful than trying to memorize the formulas. Uh, but I have a few practice problems here. You'll notice on some of the homework problems, it looks really specific. Uh, it's really just asking us to do what we did. What we're going to do above uh, these first three it says express the following equations in logarithmic form all right so what that means if we want to express something in logarithmic form well we have an exponential form here 10 to the negative 3 equals 0 0.001 now these are all numbers that must be true it is true but it does it's not asking you to simplify or anything it's asking you to switch to log form so what we do just like we talked about, we grab the base and move it as the base of the other side. And just think about what would happen if I move the 10 to the other side, the negative 3 is now on the left by itself. We have a log on the right side now. Its base is 10 and the inside is 0 0.001. So that's exactly what we did in this part. We grabbed the base, we moved it to the other side. What was in the exponents now by itself. On the right side we have a log. Its base is t, the base from the other side, and the inside was what was by itself. And this problem um, you can see the way it's written. It's really trying to remind you when you have a base of 10 that we don't necessarily write the base. So if you want to simplify this, you can actually simplify this the way it looks by just writing log of 0 0.001. Right, we don't need the base of 10 because it's understood there. Right, now this question's worded a little specifically. If you look at what it's saying, it's saying this e expression is equivalent to log of a equals b. Well, a is what's being represented inside the log, the point zero zero one, and the b is what is by itself, the three. All right, so sometimes you'll, with the homework problems, you'll have to just answer it like this, what is a and b? Other times, you will answer it by writing the equation in, and the directions will exactly tell you what to do. But number two and three are the same idea. We want to switch to logarithmic form. Just practice grabbing the base and moving it to the other side. So when we move the e to the other side, this time we got x that's on the left and the right is log. Its base is e and the inside is 4. And log base e is the same thing as ln or the natural log. And you do want to get in the habit of doing that. If you have an L in there, it's understood it's base E. You don't need to write it. But this one, the way it's written, this is would be our final answer. However, it wants it the A and B thing again. Just notice A, they're asked for the thing inside the L in, which is A. And B is the thing by itself, which is X. And then this last one here, it's not asking for the a and b thing, it's just asking you to rewrite the expression, but we grab the base of nine, move it to the other side. We're left with t equals log, its base is nine, and the inside is p. And for this one, it's going to ask you for the equation. You would type this whole thing in there is a button if you hit that up arrow on the homework with a log inside it. You, just, you can type in the word log or you can hit the log with the base. Okay. 
right? The next three are switching the other way. So if we have logarithmic form, express the following in exponential form. Now, you wanna remember the same exact pattern we just dealt with. Grab the base and move it to the other side. Okay, so that's the pattern. Regardless of which side you go from and to, you move the base to the other side. When you start with the log, it becomes an exponent. Right, so we're gonna grab the base here, which is t. Move it to the other side. When we move the t to the other side, the t log goes away and only b remains. On the left and the right side, we get t to the u power. And this one, that's all it's asking for. It's not asking for any a and b thing like the first two up here. None of these are. But the last two here to practice are just, uh, again, more reminders of the base thing. So we have log of v equals 4. So remember when log is written without a base, it's understood to be 10. If you want to write that in, you can. Now we move it to the other side, the base to the other side. The v is what's left by itself. And now we have 10 to the fourth power. All right, now one thing that might be a kind of weird about this one is you think, well, this is a number I could just type it in, but it does want this as your answer. Don't figure out what 10 to the fourth power is and use that number. But the last one here, similar, the natural log, when we have natural log, the base is E. Technically, when you have natural log written, you're not supposed to ever write a base in, but I think it's a good idea until you get comfortable with it to just fill it in, but follow the same pattern and we get y equals e squared. And once again, e is a button on your calculator. You could figure out a decimal part for this, but you want to just leave this alone for now. It's only wanting you to change the form. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is using doing logs on the calculator. I kind of looked at it a little bit. Uh, you saw that logarithms on the ca calculator, pretty much any calculator has the ln and the log buttons. So if you have to do log of something, if you do ln of something, you can just type them in directly. I have an example of each here. But if you don't have one of those, let's say you have log with a base of 12, how do you do it? Well, it's with the change of base formula here. Um, the reason I don't have all this highlighted is typically we only use part of it. Um, but what this is saying, log base b of x is equal to, I like to remember this last one here. But some people like to use the log one, some people like to use the ln one. What this change of base formula is saying is you can do log of what's inside divided by log of the base. And your new base can be anything you want. But we want to pick something that our calculator can actually do. So we either pick base 10 or base E. It sort of looks like a division rule. But to avoid all the equal signs, I'll write each one over here. Log base b of x is the same thing as log of x over log of b. And it's also the same as using ln instead of log. You can use absolutely either one. It doesn't matter. Oops, you can't mix and match like I was about to write. Uh, if you do ln on the top, you have to do ln on the bottom. If you do log on the top, you have to do log on the bottom. My recommendation, just pick one of them and do the same one every single time. All right, but we'll see that in part three. All right, but the following, it says evaluate the following logarithms. Evaluate the four decimal places when necessary. ln of 17. ln of 17, if you just hit the ln button, and we went around to four decimal places, put 17 inside, 2.8332. 
out. Oh, I forgot to look at the next one. The next one says log of eight. So you want to hit the log button and eight inside and we get 0 0.9031 rounded to four spots. I guess one thing I'll do with this example, because the bases are different, you can't pick whichever one you want. If you have to do log of eight, you cannot type in ln of eight. ln of eight is a different number. And ln of eight, you can see, is 2.0794. We'll see in the next section what this really means, why it ends up being so different. Uh, but the last one, log base 12 of 31. I do the ln one because it just looks different. It looks more special than writing the log. Uh, but what this change of base formula is saying is we do ln of the top or the inside number divided by ln of the bottom or the base. But one thing that's very important is this is the way you have to type it in. You cannot combine these. You cannot cancel out anything. You have to type it in exactly like this. You have no log rules that tell you how to simplify this. Right, let's go ahead and type it in. We got the ln of 31 divided by ln of 12. And we get 1.3819. Going forward, if we use this, I'm only going to do it the ln way, but if, just so you can see, if you do log of 31 divided by log of 12, you get the same thing. But that's the only other thing you can type in. Um, like I said, you can't mix and match ln of 31 divided by log of 12. If you mix and match, they're very different. See that number is very different. Um, you cannot put the two numbers inside the same log. ln of 31 divided by 12 is different. All of these are bad. These bottom two are bad. And there's absolutely no other thing you can use. Okay. Now some calculators, not all, some calculators do have a change of base inside it. I believe this one does if you hit math. I don't use this very number, but if you use math on this calculator, you'll if you go down towards the bottom, you'll see this log base thing. Oops. If I highlight that, it'll actually let you do what you want directly. So log base 12 of 31 will give you the same thing. So some calculators have that, some do not. If your calculator does not, you just got to remember how to do this. But you can see it's the same thing that we had above. All right, so one thing I wanted to talk about um, was what these numbers mean. I'm going to use the last one since we can have the actual numbers filled in. Uh, and it's, it's often helpful because sometimes, you know, if you see this number log base 12 of 31 is 1.3819, well, what does that mean? Who knows, right? Well, it does mean something. And in English, what it means is that the number you get out, 12 raised to the 1.381 power, 3819 power equals 31. So log base 12 of 31 is telling you what power I raised 12 to to get to 31. So the one up here, you know, there's an invisible 10. Log of 8 is this number. It's saying 10 raised to this power is about 8 because we rounded. It's not going to be exactly. Ellen has the base of E. This one's saying E raised to the 2.8332 power is going to be about 17. Um, and I definitely have a typo here. This should be 31. 12 raised to the 1.38194 power is a, equals about 31. And you can see that. 12 raised to the 
0.3819 power. It's not going to be exact because I'm rounding, but it's about 31. All right, so there are a couple things that it's very helpful to remember. Um, by hand, it helps you do deal with some um, logs without a calculator, and it does help you understand what the log is doing for us. So the first one, log base B of 1 equals 0. What this is saying is no matter what the base is, if the inside of our log is 1, then we get out 0. Now you can think about why that is using our kind of thing up here. What this is saying is if I raise something, if I raise B to the 0 power, I always get 1. And that is true. If we raise b to the 0 power, we get 1. All right, the next one, log base b of b equals 1. So if the base equals the inside, we get out 1. Why is that true? Well, what log base b of b means, using what we did up here, this is saying, what power do I have to raise B to to get to B? Well, it's already there, so I have to raise it to the first power. B to the first power equals B. Um, the next one, log base B of B to the R power equals R. So if you have an exponent in here, you get out R. All right, so the base of the log and the base of the exponent match. This also will make sense. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's a little more complicated because of the layers here, but it's asking what power of b gives me b to the r? Well, it's kind of in this, the wording, b to the r power equals uh, b to the r. The last one is far more, more definitely the more confusing one. It says b to the log base b of x equals x. So if the base of the log and the base of the exponent match and the log is in the exponent, then we get out what's inside the log. Um, you can definitely make sense of this one, but it's, it's more complicated because what the log is telling you is that power thing and then we're raising it to a power. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this one be. Uh, for those of you that would like a more concrete understanding of that, you can definitely email me or ask me about it. And I'd be happy to explain. All right, but the main thing we want to do is use these rules, use them properly, and you'll see a problem in the homework, some problems in the homework. Evaluate the following logarithms without using your calculator. I'm more than okay with using your calculator to check, but you should really try to do it without a calculator. All right, so log base 4 of 1, that's automatically 0. If the inside of a log is 1, it's automatically 0. This base could have been anything that's valid. It could have been 100. It could have been square root of 2 or something super weird. The inside is 1. The output is 0. All right, the second one, log base 7 of 1 over 343. Now, if you are trying to do these by hand, you don't want to try to see exactly what the rule is off the, at the stop, at the start, I mean. What you want to do is write the inside as a power of the base. So what I want to do is write the 1 over 343 as a power of 7, a power of the base. You know, definitely the first thing to do here if you have a fraction is to get rid of the fraction. You can't just get rid of the fraction, but remember we can flip the inside. We can make it 343 on the top if we make it to the negative power, if we switch the sign of the power. And we talked a little bit about that in one of the previous sections, but that's an old exponent rule. Next, in order to be able to do this by hand, 343 has to be a power of 7. And you can check that it is 7 cubed. 
I'll just show you here right here. 7 raised to the third power equals 343. I went away quickly. 7 to the third power equals 343. I'm going to plug that in. We got 7 cubed is 343, and it's raised to the negative 1 power. Now you're almost in the spot to be able to use this rule but you need just one exponent on the inside. The base is matching now. We need to multiply the exponents. This is something where we multiply. When we raise exponents to exponents, we multiply them. All right, so we get log base seven of seven to the negative three power. And because the bases match, our answer is the exponent from rule three, negative three. And if you want to, you can type this in your calculator check. We've seen how to type these in our calculator from the previous section. I'm not going to do that. Uh, third one, log base 6 of the square root of 216. We want to write the inside as a power of 6, a power of the base. And the first thing I would do if I am presented with a radical is get change the radical to an exponent. And we talked about the square root. There's an invisible 2 here and a 1 power. It is the 1 half power. All right, so we've gotten it written as a power. Now we want it to be a power of 6. 216 is a power of 6. It is the third power. So we got 6 cubed to the 1 half power. And you can check that. 6 raised to the third power is 216. These powers are always going to be nice numbers, and they're not going to be too big. Um, so you, know, you can just check a few. Definitely not 6 squared, because that's 36. Okay. And now... This is the same rule as the previous one. We have two exponents. We want to multiply them. Doesn't matter that one's a fraction now. We want to multiply them. And we got 6 to the 3 halves power inside. And the bases match. If the bases match, we use the exponent as our answer, which is 3 halves. Now one that typically tends to bother people when you do these by hand is when the logs have fractions as uh, bases. It's a very, very similar to doing the number two in reverse. We want to write this as a power of one third. Right. And when I have to do fractions, I like to do it in steps, in two steps. If I can write it as a power of three, I want to do that first, and then I'll go to one third from there. To me, that's the more easy way, because if you can write it as a power of three, then we can just flip it by changing the exponent sign. So first I'm going to write it as a power of 3. Make sure you leave the base 1 third. Yeah, that does not change. And 27 is 3 to the third power. Now that we've got it as a power of 3, now we flip it and change the sign of the exponent. So there's a couple ways to think about flipping it. You know, what I think about when we flip a whole number, we flip the three part here. It's really three over one. So three over one flipped becomes one over three. 
And then when we flip, we have to change the sign of the exponent from 3 to negative 3. So when you deal with fractions with these, that's what you got to do. You, you'll pretty much come to find that if you do this first step, you're ultimately just making the exponent negative. But now that the bases match one third and one third, we get out our exponent of negative three. All right, and the last one is a rather direct application of the last rule here. It is one that we will use quite a bit, especially in the last couple sections of this chapter. And really what you want to notice is that 6 to the log base 6 of 14, since the bases match, which they will, we get out the number inside, which is 14. There's not really much to do there. The inside of the log here doesn't have to be a power of anything because it's a different rule. As long as the base of the exponent matches the base of the log, we are good to go. But I do highly, highly, highly encourage you to try to do these by hand, the problems that are in the section without a calculator. Of course, you can check the bigger power thing like I did in the calculator. Just don't type in this until you get a final answer. Right? You can check. Right. So there are a couple, or one very specific application of this that we will use most of the time when we get to the last couple sections, and that is when our bases are e. These last two rules, if the bases are e, log base e of e to the r equals r, and e to the log base e of x equals x, if we plug those in, we get these two rules. Once again, they are really the same rules as above, just using a base of E, but it's so common to use a base of E, I think having it separated is pretty important. And also, this is something you want to do without your calculator, and then you can check it after the fact. Uh, this first one is the natural log of the eighth root of E to the fifth. That looks like a lot like the first one. We want to write the inside as a power of e right, so we got the natural log and we've talked about this a couple times even in this video when we have a radical our exponents a fraction the top of the fraction is the inside exponent the bottom of the fraction is the number on the radical e to the 5 eighths and that rule exactly says that ln of e to a power equals the power 5 eighths. And the last one here is very, very direct because, once again, when we do stuff like this, we don't really know how to deal with having numbers elsewhere. So e to the ln of x equals x. This one's very direct. Following that, e to the ln of the square root of 5 equals the square root of 5. It's direct from this rule. But you can type in this to your calculator. You'll get your 5 eighths if you want to check it. You can type in this to your calculator. You'll get the square root of 5, but it'll be a decimal because calculators automatically round radicals like that. Okay, but this is the introduction to logarithms. So the key points that we hit on here are going to be very important going forward.